Oh, yay, oh, yay, oh, yay. On December 6, 2011, the Supreme Court will hear oral arguments in Williams v. Illinois, a case involving the Confrontation Clause of the Sixth Amendment. Here are the facts. In early 2000, a 22-year-old woman, L.J., was kidnapped, sexually assaulted, and robbed. After going to the police, uh, L.J. Uh, provided a um, blood sample and vaginal swabs were taken. Some months later, Sandy Williams was arrested for an unrelated offense. Police took a blood sample from Williams, generated a DNA profile of Williams, and placed that profile in the Illinois State Police, or ISP, DNA database. A few months after that, the LJ's vaginal swabs and blood sample were sent from Illinois to Maryland to be tested by a company called Cellmark. Cellmark developed a DNA profile from the semen on LJ's vaginal swabs, and that uh, DNA profile was returned to Illinois. The Cellmark DNA profile was compared with, uh, was ultimately matched with Sandy Williams' DNA profile in the ISP database. LJ then identified Williams in a lineup over a year after the original crime, and Williams was charged with numerous offenses arising from the 2000 incident. He was tried before a judge in a non-jury trial. At the trial, ISP forensic biologist Sandra Lombados was allowed to testify as an expert witness, and she based her opinion regarding the match between the ISP profile and the Cellmark profile in part on the Cellmark reports. But nobody from Cellmark testified at Williams' trial. The judge rejected Williams' confrontation clause challenge to the, to the use of the Cellmark report without the Cellmark personnel testifying. Williams was convicted on several counts and his convictions were affirmed in the Illinois Appellate and Supreme Court. The Confrontation Clause of the Sixth Amendment provides that in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to, confront, to be confronted with the witnesses against him. In 2004, the Supreme Court handed down a landmark Confrontation Clause case, Crawford versus Washington. In Crawford, the court reasoned that for so-called testimonial materials, Materials, materials such as uh, a police interrogation. If the, if the person who created the out-of-court statement, the so-called declarant, did not testify at the defendant's criminal trial, uh, that testimonial material could be um, used against the defendant only if the uh, out-of-court witness, the declarant, was unavailable and the defendant had had a prior opportunity to cross-examine him, for example, at a preliminary hearing. And testimonial for these purposes means something developed for the primary purpose of being used uh, in criminal litigation. In 2009, the Supreme Court extended the Crawford rationale to cover forensic uh, reports, a cocaine uh, analysis, in the case Melendez-Diaz versus Massachusetts. And then in 2010, in Bullcoming versus New Mexico, the court held that such materials could not be presented um, uh, through the use of a substitute witness uh, in Bullcoming, uh, another uh, member of the, the lab other than the one who had actually done the testing. In the Williams oral argument, Williams will argue that like the report that identified cocaine in Melendez-Diaz and like the blood alcohol report in Bullcoming, the uh, the, D, the Cellmark DNA report was testimonial. It was prepared at the behest of the police in anticipation of a criminal prosecution. Therefore, Williams will argue, the analysts who prepared the report at Cellmark should have, uh, were witnesses against him for confrontation clause purposes. In other words, they should have been required to testify about the report. They should have been available for cross-examination. Even though the Selmark report was not formally admitted into evidence at, at Williams' trial, uh, Sandra Lombados' testimony conveyed the substance of the report to the trier of fact. Furthermore, Williams will argue that the Selmark report was presented for the truth of the proposition that it was his semen that was found on 
uh, the vaginal swab taken from LJ, and, and that his DNA uh, therefore connected him to the crime. Even though Lombados testified as an expert, Williams will argue, the Confrontation Clause does not allow her testimony to substitute for that of the Cellmark personnel who prepared the report. Finally, Williams will argue that any error in this case is not harmless. Um, he will argue that LJ originally identified another man as her assailant and only identified Williams as her assailant over a year after the original crime. The state of Illinois will argue, first, that the Selmark report was not hearsay, that it was not offered for the truth of the proposition that Williams was the source of the DNA. Rather, the, the, the state will argue that the, the report was merely used to explain the background to the independent opinion developed by Lombados based on all the uh, technical information. In the alternative, the state will argue that the Selmark report was not even testimonial. The state uh, reasons that the re Selmark report was too informal to be testimonial, and further that it was designed to uh, make possible further examination and analysis of the material rather than to speak directly to the ultimate question of whose DNA was found uh, after LJ was assaulted. Finally, the state will argue that even if there is a confrontation clause error in this case, such error is harmless because LJ identified uh, Williams both in the lineup and at his trial. 